I'm going to introduce you now to LSD. This is God's LSD. Low, slow and deep. That's how we should be breathing. Not the high chest breathe, but the low abdominal breathe. We will learn from wellness guru, Barbara O'Neill, one breath at a time. In this eye-opening video, she's about to completely change the way you think about something you do 20,000 times a day without even realizing it. Imagine unlocking a hidden superpower that's been right under your nose, literally. Barbara is about to show you how the simple act of breathing can be your secret weapon against stress, brain fog, and fatigue. She take you on a fascinating journey through the science of respiration, revealing how your diaphragm holds the key to unlocking a treasure trove of health benefits. You'll discover how to turn each inhale into a mini meditation and every exhale into a stress-busting ritual. Barbara's practical tips will have you breathing like a Zen master in no time, transforming your body into a haven of calm amidst life's chaos. But this isn't just about feeling good in the moment. Barbara's insights could be the game changer you've been searching for, potentially impacting everything from your sleep quality to your decision-making skills. So, are you ready to harness the incredible power of your own breath? Prepare to be amazed as Barbara O'Neill shows you how to breathe your way to a healthier, happier you. Many people are high chest breathers because the skirt or the pants or the belt is too tight or their posture is so bad, like this. So how do you get a better posture? Strengthen your abdominal muscles. When you strengthen your abdominal muscles, they're all connected to the spine and strengthening the abdominal muscles. Have you done your push-ups today? I did 30 this morning. Push-ups every day, well, at least five days a week to strengthen those abdominal muscles. And Pilates type exercises, you can get DVDs on Pilates, all about core strengthening. We talked about core strengthening to help the spine. If there's been a slipped disc, if there's been any, any injuries in the spine, take control of your injury and strengthen your core. Strengthen your core muscles, which will help to hold that injuries. I've had some major injuries to my back. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I manage it now. I don't have back pain if I give it the right conditions. And one is keeping my core strong. Also, it's keeping well hydrated. Also, it's going to bed earlier. Also, it's thanking God every day for this body that I live in and its inbuilt ability to heal itself. Sunshine every day so that you've got vitamin D so that your bones get those minerals so you've got strong bones. Inhale through the nose. A bit of training there. Did you try exercising this morning and only breathe through your nose? Not easy. Some people say, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. No, no, no. When you breathe out through your mouth, you lose too much carbon dioxide. Too much carbon dioxide in the blood is not good. That's hypoxia. Not enough carbon dioxide in the blood will, will prevent your oxygen getting into the cell. See, we have 25 trillion red blood cells. We have 270 million hemoglobin on the red blood cell and every hemoglobin has four docking sites for oxygen. And so at the, at the gaseous exchange in the lungs, when the blood comes through with four molecules of carbon dioxide, it can pick up four molecules of oxygen. But when a person's breathing through their mouth, losing too much carbon dioxide, then only two molecules of oxygen come along. So these four molecules of oxygen, only two can be picked up. So breathing through the nose allows the body to balance the blood gases. What are the blood gases? The blood gases are oxygen. Breathing in and out through the mouth, the person can have too much oxygen in the blood, but it can't get into the cell. And it's in the cell that we need it. Because when your cell has oxygen, it'll give you 18 times more energy compared to a cell with no oxygen. And there are cells not getting enough oxygen because the people are breathing in and out through their mouth. The other blood gas that it, that's essential is 
carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the gaseous waste from the combustion of oxygen and glucose at the cellular level. Again, you can have too much carbon dioxide and you can have not enough carbon dioxide. There's another blood gas and that's nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is produced in the sinus and nitric oxide is only produced when we nose breathe. When people mouth breathe, they're not producing the nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's antimicrobial. So when we breathe in and out through our nose, it allows the blood gases to be balanced. But there's more. Carbon dioxide and nitric oxide both have vasodilatory effects. That means they open the blood vessels. And when the blood vessels are opened, that's more blood. That's more oxygen. That's more nutrients. That's more white blood cells. It's more water. It's more waste being taken away. So both carbon dioxide and nitric oxide are vasodilators, opening the blood vessels. But there's something even more exciting about this. Carbon dioxide is not only a vasodilator, it's a bronchodilator. What's a bronchodilator? That's what Ventolin is, a bronchodilator, opening the bronchioles, allowing more air to come in and out. Remember why I stopped giving Peter Ventolin? because it reduces lung capacity. So I was looking for another bronchodilator. I didn't find out about carbon dioxide being a bronchodilator and Peter was long over his asthma. But my sister Yvonne discovered it and she discovered it by investigating the work of Professor Buteyko. Have you heard of Buteyko? Professor Buteyko is a Russian professor, he's dead now, but he was in the First World War as a, as a mechanic. He was quite a brilliant young man. He used to fix up all the cars. When the war was over, he thought, I think I'll study the human body because I know how an engine works, so I know how to fix it. If I learn how the body works, I reckon I'll know how to fix the body. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But the... The training program for young medics is gruelling. Sometimes they're on 24-hour calls seven days a week. <laughs> it's very hard being a doctor. And his blood pressure was going up, he was getting overweight. And he looked in the reflection on a glass one night and he looked at himself and he was shocked at what he saw. He was overweight, he was hunched like this and his mouth was hanging open. And it just confronted him. In fact, it gave him a shock. He was just a young man in his 30s <laughs> and he looked terrible. And the first thing he did was put his shoulders back and close his mouth. When you mouth breathe, it changes your whole facial structure so that the jaw hangs down. When you nose breathe, it brings everything back into balance. So he, th this, this vision, and it wasn't just a vision, it was reality, what he saw in the glass that night, it actually forced him to start breathing through his nose and start doing God's LSD, low, slow and deep. You see, the abdominal muscles were designed to aid in the breathing process. So he started to do these simple things and then he had a guy one night having an asthma attack. And he noticed the man was breathing through his mouth. And he said to the man, shut your mouth. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? <laughs> Please close your lips. <laughs> and the man looked terrified because when a person is lacking breath, the reaction is to open the mouth wide to try and get more air, but you actually don't get any more air. You get more air breathing through the nose. And then he told the man to hold his breath. <laughs> <laughs> so
So the man did what he was told and breathed low, slow and deep. Do you know when you high breathe, you stimulate your sympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system is your fight and flight nervous system. That's breathing shallow, mouth, high here. But when you breathe low, slow and deep, you stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is your calming, peaceful nervous system. And he just saw a total change in this man when he got him to nose breathe, hold his breath just briefly and breathe low, slow and deep. Here is the method. Five seconds in, hold for three seconds, five seconds out. In fact, if someone's stressed out, just get them to do that 10 times and it stimulates their parasympathetic nervous system. Remember what's your parasympathetic nervous system? Peace. Think of para peace. Your sympathetic nervous system, fight and flight, up here. <laughs> How many people having Pantex do that? You know, the first thing you do when someone's having a panic attack, tell them to close their mouth nicely. <laughs> and breathe low, slow and deep and it will calm, calm the body. And they'll be starting to get more oxygen. And when your cells have more oxygen, they're going to get 18 times more energy compared to a cell that's not getting enough oxygen because it's high shallow breathing, losing too much carbon dioxide, the blood can't pick up the oxygen, the cell can't get the oxygen. Can you see it gets in a vicious cycle? And so Professor Butego became quite famous with his theory. <laughs> and you can go to hospitals, many hospitals today have Butego method of breathing. I think it's called BMB, Buteco Method of Breathing, of teaching people how to sleep, how to breathe low, slow and deep, but it's in an asthma attack that they breathe lightly, not losing their carbon dioxide, holding their breath, raising their carbon dioxide levels, and those carbon dioxide levels, as they raise, they have the, a bronchodilator effect. And this is how my sister Yvonne finally got off the last of her Ventolin by learning the Buteco method of breathing. Or what we do today is we just Google, isn't that right? Buteco, Buteco. That's how you spell his name, the Buteco method of breathing. And I think on internet now you can just get classes of how how to do the Buteco method of breathing, which is a specific method of breathing that someone would use when they're having an asthma attack. So number one, you turn the tap off with asthma. You stop the allergen foods. Number two, when the person has an asthma attack, then you do the simple natural treatments to get more oxygen in, more <laughs> carbon dioxide that has that bronchodilator effect, breathing through the nose, more carbon dioxide, more nitric, ax nitric oxide, which dilates the blood vessels, which means more blood delivery, more oxygen delivery to the cell. What an incredible body we live in, with an inbuilt ability to heal itself.